Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts. I believe that Rick's personal standards, his um, interest in excellence and strive really for perfection uh, probably is a double-edged sword because it takes some of the efficiency out of what we do. I describe myself as being uh, terminally immature. I began uh, my relationship with Rick several years ago when he expressed to me a desire to make just a small handful of handmade guitars with his own two hands aside from his production activity. I'm going to be immature until I die. Rick puts his luthiership as a hand builder into the production instruments that we make. That reverential punk attitude. See, that's the thing, is to be reverent and punky at the same time. I know Rick's, you know, Rick's a genius. He was there before many, many other luthiers with many ideas and concepts. And every now and then like to like poke a little jab when people are getting a little too serious about everything, you know. The guitars that my dad makes are really high quality. They sound perfect. Having the players be happy is everything to us. Santa Cruz, California is probably the last true bastion of hippie culture. It is also a safe harbor to an extraordinary number of America's most talented luthiers. One of the most illustrious is Rick Turner. There is hardly anyone else in the tradition of American lutherie who has left such an indelible impression in rock and pop music history. Well, I very much like combining traditional aspects of, of the craft and the art with modern technology. And in that, I feel that I'm in the lineage, if you will, of uh, Stauffer, Scherzer, uh, C.F. Martin, um, Orville Gibson, Lloyd Lohr, and so on. These are people who had a deep understanding of the tradition of guitar making and where it came from, but were also not afraid to bring new innovations in, uh, in service of the music. And um, it's, it's a difficult thing with guitars because you're dealing with people who are uh, guitarists who are inherently conservative. The uh, most popular guitars, acoustic guitars now, uh, arguably were ones that were designed in the 1930s or even earlier. And with electric guitars, it's uh, Les Paul and Strat, uh, guitars that were designed 50 years ago. I like a lot of the aesthetic of the past but I don't want to be stuck there. I don't want to be making uh, Martin copies or Gibson copies. Uh, uh, I want to be carrying forward in that tradition. So I love to, to bring some of the new manufacturing techniques and some of the new materials in and balance them with the more traditional materials. I don't want to lose the qualities that we have in traditional instruments just in this drive just to make something new and different. This is our drill press. We use it for drilling holes. And I just drilled a very nice hole, straight. That's one of the nice things about not having to use hand drills. And I don't know what we would do without it. Sometimes the new aspects actually are going back and looking at um, things that were done in the past that for one reason or another 
uh, were not accepted commercially or uh, where the, the timing wasn't right for, for doing it. Um, great example are the, the How Warm instruments. The earliest of these instruments uh, seem to have been made in Canada under the Orm name. And then we think that the design was licensed to um, the Elias Howe Company, and they started producing them in Boston. I've got three of these guitars. This is the largest of them. Uh, and I know you're going to be seeing Henry Kaiser, who has another one. Here's my Howe Orm guitar. This is a little small-bodied one. I have this one strung high-strung, Nashville strung. So it's like the high strings from a 12-string guitar set. And there's the little space in there where the you can see through, where you can see through the um, the neck, since the neck's not really attached. This was my first acoustic guitar. Oddly enough, when I was in college, I bought it from. I bought it from uh, Eric Schoenberg, who worked in a musical instrument store in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I was. So, oddly enough, my first, first acoustic guitar back in 1972 or 73, 73 maybe? Uh, this guitar has the elevated fingerboard and um, an adjustable neck joint. The hinge point is back here at the heel, and there are two bolts, one under the fingerboard on each side of the heel, um, which can be screwed in and out, which tilt the neck forward and back, allowing almost instantaneous action adjustment. The other unusual thing about these guitars is you can see the bent arched top, the center third of the top is swelled and although this one has distorted a bit with age it's kind of slumping a little here in the sound hole area um, it is a it's really a hybrid of, uh, of a flat top and arch topped instrument um, exquisitely made these things are just beautiful they're made fully as well as Martin's of the period and you can't say that about very many other uh, guitars from the 1890s. I know Rick and I are the big fans of these things, though I only have one. I heard George Harrison collected them too, and that he had a, a lot of them. I don't know. It's great. Just use it on a film soundtrack for a Werner Herzog feature um, that Richard Thompson and I worked on together, and we used this guitar. Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts.